have more time for Q&A. <laughs> All right. Please welcome to the stage uh, with me Julian. Um, he is a longtime Prometheus maintainer, and we are going to talk you through Prometheus and its ecosystems and what has happened in the last year since last PromCon uh, in Munich uh, in 2022. So quick show of hands. We already did a quick show of hands who has been here for the first time or a second time at a PromCon, but who has just recently started using Prometheus? Like for, for whom is it like quite new um, as, a, as a thing to use? Okay, couple of hands, um, but um, we'll, we'll talk about what is Prometheus regardless. So those uh, who, who know it very well, um, you can correct me later, but um, otherwise we'll, we'll talk about what Prometheus is. So it is a metrics-based monitoring and alerting stack. Um, you can use it for instrumentation and application uh, for, for system monitoring as well. Um, it collects metrics uh, and stores them. And after storing it, it makes it queryable um, efficiently. And you can use all of that to alert on certain things in your system that you don't want to occur. And obviously, we all love dashboards uh, and, and looking at dashboards. So you can put those um, queries into, into dashboards and make, make your um, yeah. Metrics look really, really nice. Um, it is for all levels of the stack, so whether you're running on bare metal or something like Kubernetes or serverless, whatever, um, it, it just uses HTTP for the most part, um, so it, it basically runs everywhere these days. Um, quick history, as uh, Frederick mentioned in the intro, um, it started at SoundCloud. Um, you can ask Julius if you want any more details. Uh, he's around um, by, by Julius and, and Matt Proud. Um, they started it after uh, coming, coming to SoundCloud and wanting something like Prometheus, but nothing really existed back in 2012. So they started working on it, and it was fully open source in 2015. And then in 2016, the CNCF was brand new, and Prometheus was one of the very first projects who got adopted into the CNCF and then also was released as a first uh, version uh, back in 2016. Pretty exciting times. I vividly remember this. Um, and then in uh, 2017, shortly after Prometheus 2.0 with a full rewrite of the storage happened, um, and that's kind of the foundation of what Prometheus um, still uses, and the TSDB um, is, is since then uh, yeah, what, what we're using in, in the way it works, like cutting blocks every two hours and stuff that was introduced back then. Um, and in 2018, I think right after uh, Kubernetes, Prometheus graduated as the first, uh, as the second project um, in, in the CNCF. Um, last year, I think, yeah, last year, we had a really cool documentary uh, going live. Um, probably lots of people have seen it, but in case you haven't seen it, um, this is kind of a, I think, 20, 20 minute. Um, Do nice documentary, different um, users uh, yeah, describing what Prometheus has done for them, how, how it helped them, um, and, and kind of a big, bit of a be uh, backstory there as well. Um, latest numbers, right? You might see something at the top right hand. Um, Prometheus has reached 50,000 stars on, on GitHub, so that's something to celebrate, even though Stars are just stars, but that's pretty cool. Uh, even more exciting, though, is that um, the uh, contributor list uh, is ever growing. So even in the last couple of months since updating the slide, we, we had like another almost 30 new contributors, um, which is even more exciting to me. So there's a vast uh, ecosystem around people who want to contribute, who want to make the project better. And we definitely invite you all to, to do so and to contribute, uh, to talk. And we'll have more on, on meetings, et cetera, you can join. So that is super, uh, super nice to see that still after so many years, people are investing and, and contributing to Prometheus. Which brings us to expanding the team. So Julian invited Josh um, to, to join um, the uh, Prometheus team. He's going to talk uh, about uh, the new alerting, alert manager UI, for example. Then we um, had Brian Borham, who has uh, contributed significantly uh, in the past and since joining Prometheus team who joined. Um, I uh, had Kemal joined the team. He has helped a, a bunch with the client, uh, client Golang. 
um, and then more people are joining, and both of them were longtime maintainers of the uh, client Ruby. So it's super nice to onboard those people and integrate them into the team um, and, and have them part of, of the larger community, but also recognize their efforts and contributions of the past. Um, and yes, Jesus, you're somewhere in the audience back there. Um, he is also go, uh, he joined uh, Prometheus team and going to uh, talk about some super nice updates uh, that are coming in the next months. So what is Prometheus? Um, as I said, it's like for monitoring um, all sorts of systems. So whether you have a web app or like a API server like Kubernetes, we usually instrument those with a, a client library, as mentioned, client Golang or client Ruby, client Java maybe. Um, there's also going to be a good talk on that. Um, and then we can have different um, types of um, programs that might not even um, need to be modified to export metrics. So we have usually these Prometheus exporters that run along those uh, programs, and then they can um, expose metrics as well. And by exposing metrics, we mean that they have an HTTP endpoint that Prometheus can then find and scrape and ingest the data into the time series database over time. And Prometheus actually can discover those um, uh, endpoints, um, those targets to scrape using service discovery. So um, yeah, DNS or Kubernetes are super uh, popular ones um, to, to find those uh, endpoints that, that need some scraping. So you don't need to like, manually type IP addresses or anything like that. But um, Prometheus can, can dynamically do that uh, in these like, dynamic cloud environments these days. And then once you have the data in Prometheus, you can obviously use something like Grafana or just the Prometheus web UI, um, maybe something like Promlens uh, to query it, um, or just use some automation to get something out of the uh, database again. Um, and if you're sleeping at 3 a.m., you might not be looking at dashboards the entire time. We have alerting, so you can have alerts being uh, sent based on uh, yeah, met, uh, queries that you can write, and those are sent to Alert Manager for deduplication and routing to different um, notification systems. Um, Slack, uh, Discord was recently added, um, so many others. So what is a, a time series, right? We identify a time series by this identifier. We'll briefly talk about this in, in just a, a second on the next slide. And then this identifier always has IN64 timestamps and then always a float64 value. So that's kind of the key value pairs, always a timestamp and a value. And we identify these time series by the metric name, um, which is kind of a special label. It's actually just a label under the hood as well, but we have a metric name, and then we have these labels um, that, that are used to identify some more specific uh, um, metrics uh, by doing that, and it's, it's really good because it's super flexible, and you don't have a hierarchy, so you can uh, slice and dice the data as you need it to be um, for your queries. Um, yeah, and PromQL is the query language. It's a functional query language, um, and it's especially great for time series computation. It's not a SQL style query language, and that's also quite of, of a deliberate choice. Otherwise, the queries can get really, really long if you do all of the label. Um, um, uh, metrics and selectors in, in the queries, so uh, that's why PromQL exists. Um, yeah, you can answer questions like, um, get me my entire infrastructure with more than 100 gigabytes of capacity of uh, drives, um, and those shouldn't be mounted on the root, so that's like the mount point is not slash, right? And then we can, we can query for those as well and get some very specific answers that we're looking for. The alerting, um, we kind of embed those queries into the expression um, a field in, in a YAML file, so that's what's uh, been highlighted here. And we can do something like um, alert us if the error rate is above 5% for more than five minutes, and we want to have a severity critical, so based on the severity label, we can either route to like a Slack if it's maybe warning, or like a page at duty or some other on-call system um, if we want to actually page people uh, and, and, and wake them up uh, possibly in the night. So that's uh, what we use these for. And then bridging the gap, not everything I already mentioned in one of the first slides is um, Prometheus native or exposes metrics by default, even though I think the ecosystem has 
really grown in the last six, seven, ten years, I guess. Uh, one could say um, so many applications these days are starting to just expose a metrics endpoint, which is incredible to see, but if it doesn't exist, you can still use these exporters, uh, small programs that would query the application's API, uh, do some transforming, and then expose the, the uh, data as a Prometheus um, exposition format, so Prometheus can scrape it. And with that, I want to hand over to Julian, who is going to talk about what's new in Prometheus. Yes, so <clears throat> let's look at what is new in Prometheus. Uh, first, we look at Prometheus, Prometheus, and then a bit wider in the uh, Prometheus and Prometheus Echo uh, community uh, GitHub organization. So native histograms, which were introduced at the last uh, uh, PromCon, uh, what is an histogram? It enables you to measure distributions. And uh, this is an example of uh, the distribution of uh, response time. And you can see uh, the histograms that were used in Prometheus before uh, on the uh, left, uh, left side. And on the right side, you have the new histograms. And uh, what we can see is that uh, the new histograms basically enables you to really tell more th the story, because this is the same data you are seeing with both the old and the new histograms. And what is important with the new native histograms is that uh, they are much more efficient and you gain a lot more granularity. What has been happening in the last releases of Prometheus, but also in the client libraries, is that we are really uh, integrating them into uh, every piece of Prometheus. So there has been a lot of improvement regarding the performance, regarding PromQL, but now uh, they are also uh, in more client libraries, so you can really uh, start uh, using them, and we are seeing more and more people using them and contributing to them. So it's really nice to see that the work that the team was doing one year ago is still very strong, and we still have many contributions and many bug fixes of those new native histograms. So uh, I encourage you to give it a shot to look at the talk from last year and, uh, and to really uh, start playing with the native histograms if you are measuring latencies and alerting on them because it's really like uh, something that's very, very exciting for the community to just be able to measure correctly the latencies of your applications. So this is the talk that we had at the last PromCon. Uh, yeah, so this is also what you can do when you have uh, so much granularity in the native histograms, and uh, yeah. Uh, the other improvement that uh, we have uh, included now by default in Prometheus is the string labels built. So what it means basically is that we are now storing uh, the strings differently in Prometheus itself, the labels differently in Prometheus itself. So this is the technical details, but the general idea is that uh, we are able to cut the memory by a lot uh, on so certain workloads just by storing the labels differently internally. There is still more work in progress regarding memory reduction of Prometheus, but we are happy to bring that by default to every, u every user. Uh, and I think it's really nice improvements to see that we can still push the boundaries of the performance of uh, Prometheus itself. And I, I really want to thank Brian Boham because this is mainly his work, and it's really uh, impressive to see the ideas he's coming with and how oh, they implemented and the effect they have on actual production workloads. Keep firing for, this is a new field for your alerts. Uh, so sometimes you have an alert that will fire for like five minutes, then the condition will go away, and the alert will need to start again. Uh, for uh, such use cases, now we have a keep firing for, which means that if the alert is not firing anymore, you can still keep it firing in case the underlying condition comes back. So uh, we have some, we have got some customers that had, that had some uh, flapping alerts, and this is kind of helping them uh, with just being able to see, okay, um, let's reduce the noise, let's reduce the new notifications. You cannot always fix the source of your data. You can. You don't always want to mess with too much uh, complex PromQL queries because you can uh, try to achieve that in PromQL, but now we have a first-class field for that, so this is uh, also a nice addition. There is also the issue with people that have uh, configuration files with thousands and thousands uh, of uh, 
uh, reliable configurations or, or targets or uh, script config. So uh, we have added the ability now in uh, 2.43 that you can now split your main configuration file and include script configurations from uh, different files. So if you want to uh, make your Prometheus configuration more readable or if you want to delegate a job to a certain team, you can just include config files from uh, different a file. So this is also a nice addition for people who like to just split their configuration and work in a Debian style uh, config the uh, way. In Prometheus 2.47, we are also introducing open uh, an open telemetry receiver, which is very, very experimental. Uh, it's working, but what we are seeing is that we need to continue working with the open telemetry community and uh, to the client side, and we also need to figure out some stuff on the Prometheus side, but this is a really nice first step directly in Prometheus for supporting open telemetry natively, so that whatever your workload is, or if you are stuck with uh, an open telemetry client, that you can still use Prometheus directly without needing uh, other things in the middle. So this is still very early, but it's a really nice first step, and we have really people involved in that work, both in Prometheus and in open telemetry to make this work and to find the good answers to, uh, to bring that to reality and to achieve actually a, a good compatibility between the two projects. Now if we go outside of uh, Prometheus itself and we look at the SNMP exporter which is used to monitor network switches, which is a quite popular um, exporter in the community, uh, the SNMP exporter we have broken the configuration format in the, la in the last really in the 0 0.23 release uh, because um, it was really difficult when you had a networking team that has many different passwords or when you need to rotate your password, you need to do a bunch of different uh, generators to get your configuration in one place. Now we are splitting that. So now if you have many switches, you can actually uh, split the authentication and the scraping configuration, so the MIP, uh, in different files, which makes it a lot easier for people who are uh, managing SNMP exporters. So this is a change that has been very long in the making, but it's a really welcome addition, and it's really a nice improvement for any uh, network administrator which is working with Prometheus. The other uh, improvement in the SNMP exporter is that you can also query multiple modules in one script. So if you have a vendor-specific MIP, so you need to query like, uh, I don't know, um, Cisco-specific metrics, and you also have a quite more um, generic uh, MIP with like the basic, um, the basic uh, network speeds, then you can actually co combine both of them in the same script, and the SNMP exporter will just query the two modules in one script, so which is really a uh, nice uh, improvement as well, because um, you don't need to have multiple jobs if you want to achieve that. So in the past, you needed to have multiple jobs or multiple targets to do that. Now you can just do that all in once. Which brings us also to the MySQL D exporter. So the MySQL D exporter now supports multiple targets. So uh, the previously with the MySQL D exporter, if you have two uh, different MySQL servers, you needed to have two different MySQL D exporter because we linked one to one. Now you can have a configuration file with that says, okay, this is my MySQL servers, and when you are querying the MySQL D exporter with Prometheus, you can say, okay, I want to query that database or that database or that database. So uh, you can now really like uh, use less MySQL D exporters than before, which is really nice when you have like three MySQL, ser um, three MySQL servers and you don't want to have like the overhead of managing a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship between the exporter and uh, the database. The Java client, so there is a talk about this tomorrow, but I wanted to still uh, say it on stage uh, today. Uh, S reach 1.0 yesterday, uh, and uh, among the exciting new things, we have open telemetry metric support, so if you want to use the lightweight Java client from Prometheus, but you are, you are uh, using open telemetry, you can now emit open telemetry metrics from the Java client, and it is also integrating with uh, open telemetry tracing, so uh, if, uh, if you are using open telemetry for tracing and Prometheus for scraping, then you can still uh, have like um, exemplars directly at attached to your uh, metrics. 
The other thing is that the Java client also has native histograms, uh, which is also really uh, cool to see that uh, they are also going to another language than Golang, especially the Java client, which is quite popular. Uh, so it's really nice to see that the native histograms will also get more speed and more usage thanks to uh, new uh, programming languages being included. The alert manager, uh, well, uh, we have new receivers for the alert manager, so uh, we bring the alerts closer to you if you are using Microsoft Teams, Discord, or WebEx. So you don't need to have an external, um, an external uh, sidecar if you need to do that, because now we have first-class integration for the, those new receivers. And then uh, when we mentioned the, the new team members, we did not mention yet the new, uh, the two la last main team members, which are the Windows exporter maintainers, which are joining the team, because we are bringing the Windows exporter to become an official exporter. So the Windows exporter was known as the WMI exporter, then was moved to the Prometheus community, but now it's time to make it really an official exporter and to have it uh, more widespread uh, along the Prometheus community. So uh, by becoming an official exporter, it will move to the Prometheus organization, and you will be able to find and download it directly on the Prometheus website. Uh, we had some delay because the license is not Apache 2, but MIT. But now we have fixed that with the CNCF. We got an exception. So it's really the final stage. And we will do the move quite soon. And uh, it's, it's really nice to see new project coming in the Prometheus organization and recognizing the awesome work that has been done in the Windows uh, exporter community because it's really like uh, a very an active project and it's really nice to see that we are uh, actually bringing those people inside this point this team that can bring us also a different perspective on the project. All right, thank you, Julian. Um, super exciting stuff. Um, and we'll see lots and lots of these things uh, also being shown at, at PromCon, so looking forward to that. Um, Bugscrub is back, so a um, couple of maintainers are meeting every Tuesday, and they are going to discuss contributions, pull requests. So if you have a pull request or an issue or anything um, that you want to like, get a more of a one-on-one or like, at least like a face-to-face -face, um, situation on, um, you can join those Bugscrubs and and, and talk to the team uh, via, via these uh, online meetings. And then the other uh, one is the Prometheus and Ecosystem calls. So those happen quarterly on Wednesdays. Um, and uh, we are kind of like assembling everything that has happened in the last three months since the last um, Prometheus and Ecosystem call uh, before that. And it's kind of a um, in-between update, because like PromCon only happens every year. Maybe there's like a KubeCon observability day or whatever with some updates, but this is kind of a continuing and really um, yeah, a stable way of, of getting uh, a good feeling for what's happening in, in Prometheus, but also like the uh, ecosystem, like exporters or side projects or um, other things like Thanos and, and, and Mimir and I don't know, you name it. Like, Whenever uh, maintainers have something new to show, they, they show up and, and talk about these things there. So definitely join those if you want to. Uh, we also have a new Ansible collection um, that is uh, completely uh, written from scratch, uh, as far as I know, and no, but it's... No, we have improved it and moved it as an actual collection. OK, yeah, exactly. So uh, improved it and made it an actual collection. Perfect. So uh, if you're using Ansible, your life has uh, been improved as well. Um, and now what's coming? So we are going to see a lightning talk on the new Alert Manager UI, which is super exciting. Um, hopefully, you will get some more uh, um, yeah, development on there and get new features again. Um, so that's, that's something I'm looking forward to as well. And then today at uh, 15.45, there's a talk on the created timestamp. And those are just two examples. We'll have so many more. Um, um, like the hotel, hotel LP ingestion, for example. There's a talk there and so many things. Um, and we're also going to meet on Saturday with the Prometheus team and friends, and we're going to discuss everything that is kind of brewing in the ecosystem, and we'll see what we'll, we'll add to the list and how to move forward uh, Prometheus in the next year. Um, so that's what we had for the slides. Now it's time for your questions. Are uh, there questions?
going once. That's what I do at the Prometheus ecosystem call. <laughs> going once, <laughs> going twice. No questions, everything perfect. You're looking forward to all the updates in detail, I guess. And then you can ask your questions there, which is also good, because those people are actually know the things in detail. All right, so But, if there are no uh, questions, no? Make sure to check prometheus.io slash community. If you want to find us, we have uh, the calendar there, we have mailing list, we have everything that you need to know. And if you want to join, uh, basically all the meetings that we do are open to the people who are using Prometheus and want to be involved in the project, so feel free to just join us. If you don't have the question now, but you want to ask it on the mailing list or anywhere, you can always do that. Uh, we are really, uh, what's, what I really like about Prometheus personally is that it's really open and we don't do much uh, in the dark, so we really try to do a lot on the public mailing list and the public channel, so always feel free to ask us questions there. Uh, we are really open to, uh, to discuss with you, to get the feedback from the community. And not only during PromCon, but like all the year, it's really super important for us to learn for the users and to uh, get your feedback on anything that we do well or not well, of <laughs> course. But, so always feel free to join us uh, in, the, in the meetings. If you have questions, if you want to just look at the meetings or just join, just we are available all year around. We are a big team and we are really uh, uh, working from different backgrounds and we really uh, enjoy getting feedback from you. All right, then that's it, and we'll be right back with the next talk. Thanks. Thank you.